preheat your oven, depending on how hot your oven runs, um, somewhere between 190 and 200 degrees. Um, so I probably sit mine at about 195. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my oven preheated um, on the 195. The other thing I'm just doing as we prepare is I'm cutting up dates. So if you're choosing to make the date scones today, uh, you can go ahead and cut your dates. I do choose to do this manually for a couple of reasons. Number one, I find if you do it in the thermix, you really can't tell if any of the pits have been left in the dates. Uh, then I can make sure that there's nothing going in my scones or if any of them are a bit hard, um, I can put those aside as well. Uh, this recipe is a recipe that's been handed down through generations of our family. Um, we're not really quite sure where the recipe started, but they've always made them by hand um, with simple ingredients. And I've converted this recipe to Thermomix so that I can make them even faster. My mum still makes them manually, even though she does own a Thermomix. And she's known for her scones. They're absolutely delicious. So I've got my TM6 ready. I'm going to use the TM6 today. Uh, I do have a TM5 as well, um, but I am going to use the new model for this one. It doesn't matter whether you have a TM31, a TM5 or a TM6, you can make this recipe nice and easy. If you don't have a Thermomix yet, you can make this recipe manually just by stirring them in a bowl. So still use the same ingredients that I do. Um, Mum does hers manually still, uh, just by stirring in a bowl, and then I'll show you how to um, roll out the scones. Um, I'm absolutely passionate about using the Thermomix and cooking from scratch. So I love seeing what you're creating at home and um, I'd be thrilled to see what you've made as a result of our live video today. My pages for Lisa's Thermomix cooking journey on both Instagram and Facebook have a wide following across the world. So we'll go ahead and start with the scone recipe. So very, very basic ingredients, but these turn out really light and fluffy. In this recipe, we've got three cups of self-raising flour. We've got three quarters of a cup of cream. You can use any cream. I'm using pure cream purely because I got it on special and it was almost out of date. So that just saved money. So I thought I may as well get that. Um, quite often I do use Zimmel cream. So if you're lactose intolerant, you can use Zimmel and that works out really well. Um, and then milk, you can use any type of milk as well. So, um, so three cups of self-raising flour, three quarters of a cup of cream and one cup of milk. We're gonna make the plain scones first and then I'm gonna go straight into making the date scones. So for the first recipe, we're gonna add the three cups of self-raising flour. Just to make it a little more simplified on the video, I have actually already organized the quantities just to put straight in. So you can go ahead now and load those into your Thermomix. So we're just gonna swipe across on our, on our TM6 and I'm just gonna to go to the scales. If you wanted to weigh out what a cup was, you could actually weigh on the scales there. Otherwise, you can just put your cup straight in. Um, I don't need to weigh in this instance because we've got our three cups all ready to go. So I'm just gonna go back to the front screen there. So I'm gonna put the flour in. That all just goes straight into the bowl. And then I'm going to pour my cream in, which is three quarters of a cup. And I've also weighed out one cup of milk, so that goes in next. And they're the only ingredients that go into these plain scones. If you'd like to, you can put a very small pinch of salt, but our family have never bothered with that. Um, so that's it. That's all that goes into these scones. So I'm going to pop the lid on. And then we're going to blend this mixture up um, for three seconds on speed five. So I'm just going to turn the dial to three seconds. And then we're just gonna go around to speed five. Okay, easy as that. I'll show you what the mixture looks like now. And then we're going to knead the dough in the Thermomix. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my spatula to just push down the sides so that all that dough is down further in the bowl. Okay, so we're gonna put that back in the Thermomix now. Sit it in the cradle. We're going to put our lid and measuring cup back in place. This time we're going to knead the dough. So this is the second part, which again is really, really simple. So I just slide across. We're going to go to the dough mode on the Thermomix. Um, when I converted this recipe, I was trying to work out how long to knead it for, and it's probably between 20 to 30 seconds, but you really do keep an eye 
on the dough because we just want it to combine. If you overwork the dough for scones, they're not going to be light and fluffy. Um, so I'm going to put it on for 20 seconds. And I'm just going to turn the dial and now that's going to need. Okay, so that's 20 seconds with our dough. So as you can see, it started to form there. I am going to go the further 10 seconds um, with this one just to get it a little bit more combined. So I'm going to sit it back in and we're going to repeat that process. So 10 seconds and I'm just going to turn the dial again. So just having a look now. That's combined, that's all you need to do. That's perfect just the way it is. So I'm gonna take it out of the Thermomix now. I choose to do mine on a piece of baking paper. I don't use my thermo mat for this because I use a cutter. You can't actually use anything sharp on your thermo mat, otherwise it will cut the silicon. So I just use a piece of baking paper or you can go straight on your bench with some flour underneath. So I'm just going to put a bit of flour as the base and then I'm simply going to take the dough out. Just be really careful when you're reaching into the Thermomix that you know where to put your hands so that you don't touch those sharp blades. You'll get used to that using your Thermomix quite a bit. I know exactly where to touch and where not to touch. Okay, so that's all of my dough out of there now. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I prepare my plain scones and I'm going to cut those ready for, ready for the oven and then I'm going to go ahead and make the date scones. So those of you that want to make two flavours today, I'll make the date scones and then they'll all go in the oven together. So it's just a matter of actually combining this. I don't work the dough too much because again if you work it too much, they're not going to be nice and fluffy. And I like quite a bit of height with my scones as well. So I'm just gonna shape it here, push it together. Until I get to about that height. You can use a scone cutter or a glass, or I've just got one of these cylinders that some of the chefs use for their fancy hiding meals. Um, I find that cuts really well. When you cut down into scone dough, it's important to lift what you're cutting with it really quickly so that you don't flatten the dough as you go. So just pushing down and then pulling up quite quickly and then you can just push it out with your finger like that. So I've got some trays with some baking paper that I'm gonna sit the scones on. So I'm certainly no baker, but this is how I've been shown to do my scones through our family recipe, which started possibly with my great grandmother. I was talking to mum about it and we're not really sure where it started. Um, so I'm just forming that dough together again so that I can go again with my circles. With the last one, it's gonna be a little bit odd shaped, but that's okay. Rustic is good, still tastes the same. Okay, so there's our plain scones ready to go. So they'll be able to go in the oven when it's preheated. So I'm gonna go ahead now and make the date scones to show you how we incorporate those. It's the same um, process, um, but we just add the dates in before we add the liquid. Just pop your bowl straight in and go ahead with the second recipe. So I'm just gonna weigh in the flour for the date scones now. Okay. So that's our flour. What I might actually do is put the plain scones in the oven now that my oven has reheated. So that those of you, if you don't want to watch the full process for the date scones, you'll be able to see the plain scones when they're ready. So I'll go ahead and pop those in the oven. Just in the middle tray, I've got mine sitting at 195. I usually find somewhere between 190 to 200 degrees for those. So I'm going to put my chopped dates in now, in with the flour. I'm going to put my cream in, which is three quarters of a cup. This is a quarter cup here, so I'll do three of those. And one cup of milk. Okay, so exactly the same as before. The only difference is that the dates are in there now. 
So we're still going to blend the same as the first time. Three seconds, speed five. So I'm just going to scrape down the sides again. We're just going to go straight on to the kneading then for 30 seconds. So we finished our kneading now. That's looking better. Okay, so that is combined now and ready to cut our date spots. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit more flour. Again, just be careful that your fingers don't catch those blades. I like a lot of dates in my mixture. If you like less dates, just cut down on the quantity with those. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. We really don't want to overwork this dough, so it's important just to flatten it out and then start cutting. If you want smaller scones, you can use a smaller cutter. If you don't want them quite as high, you can um, make sure that your dough doesn't rise as much. When you pull it together, just um, make it a little bit narrower than what I'm doing, which is probably, I guess, at least two centimetres in height I've got there. It doesn't matter if they touch on the tray because um, that'll help them to go up rather than out in height. I don't really like date scones in room temperature. Um, so when I make them, I'll have one hot and then I'll freeze the excess straight away and just pull it out of the freezer, defrost it, put it in your microwave for 20 seconds um, and it's beautiful. I'm just turning the tray around in the oven for our first set of scones, our plain ones. And then I'll just pop our date ones in as well. All right. So easy as that, such a simple recipe to make. And these really do taste delicious. I think this year in particular, after a rough year, a lot of people are looking to gift things that are made with love or homemade this year to really show you know, your loved ones that you care. So um, I'm gonna be doing up a few hampers this year. Um, I've started to share some of the things that I'm making for my hampers on my Facebook page, and I'll continue to do so over the next couple of weeks. If you're not part of my newsletter group already and you would like to join, um, please reach out to me and let me know. Send me a private message with your email address and I'd be more than happy to add you onto my list. Um, I can sell Thermomixes all over Australia. Um, I offer support via video link for those that are not in Coffs Harbour. I'll take you through everything and how to use the Thermomix, including putting the bowl, blade and lid together, the whole works. Um, I'm really passionate about making sure people use their machine to its full extent. If you live in Coffs Harbour or near Coffs Harbour, I'm more than happy to come and show you the Thermomix in your house um, and show you how it works um, and show you what we can do with that as well. So I'm going to show you now how to do a pre-clean on the new model. Um, I'm just going to pop some water in it um, because as you can see, I've got quite a bit of dough in the bowl already um, and this on the lid. All right, so I've just put one litre of cold water into the Thermomix. If you use cold on dough, it's a much better option because if you use warm, it's just going to get all sticky. Now, I'm just going to reach around the front here so that I can find our clean mode. Um, so if you just go to pre-clean here on your TM6, and then it gives you lots of different options depending on what you want to clean off the bowl. There's things like dough, caramels. So if I close out of that, um, and then I'm going to turn it around to the dough option on the screen there and the machine is going to clean the bowl based on what it thinks it needs to do to get the dough off of the bowl. Um, so I'm just going to run that in the background there. And I'm just going to double check and see how my scones are going. Look at those, they're looking fantastic. Um, if you do decide to buy something from the mix shop, I would love it if you pop my name in as your consultant. It gives me a tiny little bit of permission for helping to inspire you um, with some options as well. Okay, so that pre-clean's finished now, so I'm just going to pop these away and show you what it looks like. So just touching anywhere on the screen to stop the chime. As you can see now, it has hit the lid. So that's nice and clean. And it's looking great there. So all I need to do now is get my Thermomix brush um, and give that a little bit of a wipe around with the liquid that's already in there and the bowl will be nice and clean and ready to go with the next recipe. Okay, so let's see how our scones are going. So we'll actually pull our plain scones out now. They're looking amazing. Um, we have our unique scone here with the last of the mixture. 
Um, so I'm just going to pop those up the top here and I'm just going to move my date scones into the middle. They'll need a few minutes longer. Got some nice height there. They're looking nice and floppy. So if I just open one so you can see what they look like inside. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. To go with your scones, you can make your own jam in the Thermomix, which is really easy and a great way to cut down sugar. Um, you can whip your cream in the Thermomix if you like your scones with jam and cream. Otherwise, you can pop some butter on those. As I mentioned earlier, we freeze any scones that we don't eat at the time. They can't perfect. Um, just freeze them in Ziploc bags and or containers that are sealed nicely and uh, just take them out of the freezer, let them defrost and we just pop ours in the microwave for 20 seconds um, to just get them a little bit warm and they taste just like they did when they came out of the oven. So really lovely. Um, I can't wait to see how many of you have tried these scones and have now found our family recipe because they really taste amazing. We've got lovely height in our date scones as well. I won't keep the oven open for too long um, because I don't want to ruin those with the fluffiness. So I'll pop those back in now. But as you can see, we've got a great result with the date scones as well. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed that um, live video. I hope that it gave you some tips. Um, and I really hope that it gives you um, a chance to make some beautiful Thermomix delicious fresh scones. Um, if you have any ideas of what you would like me to cover in further videos, anything that you would like me to make, please reach out and let me know and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me. My name is Lisa Ryan, local Thermomix consultant in Coffs Harbour. Thank you.